لمبادئ الدين الإسلامي والأبعاد المادية للنظرية الغربية والحضارية التي تبدو مسيطرة على القرن الواحد والعشرين هل هناك من نظرية يمكن أن نخرج بها في مطلع هذا القرن تجمع بين بعدي الحضارة وبعدي التطور أعني البعد الروحي من جانب والبعد المادي من جانب وتجمع بين الرأسمالية والأبعاد أو الأيديولوجيات النظرية الأخرى ممكن أن تكون أيضا نواة للتقريب بين الشعوب والحضارات شكرا لفخامتكم Thank you very much indeed. It is my memory from a year ago that we don't have uh, simple, easy, quick questions. We, we, we start straight away with one of the big, crucial issues from our home to the world. How do you see on that journey a coming together of what came to you when you visited Mecca and what you're trying to do in a real, tangible way for your people and their economic well-being in a world where capital is capital? Okay, allow me to, to answer you in English because we are now in a, a session where we all, always, all speak English. Well, if I had that theory, uh, I would be a very hap ma happy man. <laughs> how, can we, how can we really do it on the ground? What is a civilized man? What is a civilization? That is the question. If that is technology, big buildings, uh, uh, big cars, and so on, uh, then, then we are missing one part. And I can tell you that using the example from my country. Because we had to go through a terrible war imposed on Bosnia through genocide, through uh, ethnic cleansing, and what not. My, the capital of Bosnia, Sarajevo, was besieged for 1,500 days. It's a, the longest siege in the history of warfare. Long, longer even than Stalingrad siege. Then we had the opportunity to see what is really and who is really civilized. We are talk, talking about civilization, what is civilized. So I learned that very simple, humble people showed a degree of civilization that surprised me. And the other way around. What happened in my country, and it's happening all over the world, is that all that suffering was started and imposed upon innocent people, not because the attacker's pocket was empty, but his heart was empty. Not because people were hungry there, so we had a war on... No. It was more or less all right. But the problem was that missing link, the fact that those who attacked us, the ideologues especially, were empty-hearted. They have put their aims, their political aims above humanity. That is why. And that's why I said in, in my speech, if you allow me one minute more, that you ask uh, where, where is the solution? I must start again from my country. Bosnia is not only a part of the problem, it's a part of the solution. It is actually an asset, especially because 
It is a multi-ethnic society, and this is becoming a multi-world. So we have an example there, a paradigm of what world should look like. And we have an attempt to kill that very model. Exactly because there is the other side that thinks that we should live in mono-ethnic societies, uh, more or less a fascist idea of, of, of the world. So we should take care of Bosnia and Herzegovina, not because only it's my country, but because it's a part of, of sure. the solution. Sure. It's an asset. Why? Because we, we are talking about the dialogue between Islam and the West, for example. Well, here are the Muslims in Bosnia that have shown a civilized face that surprised me, I must admit, to some extent. So there are people there that, that can show that the future is there, that we can actually live together in future. Those people, most of them, are not very religiously educated or are not religious at all, some of them. But they lived in, in, an, in an ambience that's allowed them to understand the basic, the basic values. So we must take care of the hot spots in the world that are symbols. That's one way of solving it. Like Palestine, you can solve everything around Palestine, but the, the Middle Eastern problem is not solved until you solve the Palestinian problem. Right. Mr. So President, it's the same thing with Bosnia. Only on time, but if I can find time, I will come back again. But the question was specific to you, and thank you for a very comprehensive answer. I want to look over here as well to see if there are hands up uh, on this side. We have microphones as well. Uh, I don't see a hand yet, but when I do, I will very happily come to, uh, to this side. Um, let me just check over here. There's a hand there. A gentleman who is standing, uh, and it's microphone one. Yes, you, sir. أسعد الله صباحكم. شكرا لمنظمي المنتدى ونحن الذين دفعنا الاشتراك في المؤخرة أول منتدى أشوف بهذه الطريقة وأشكرهم على التنظيم الجيد. سمو الأمير سؤالي من عباقتك ومن خبرتك السابقة. كررت في كلمتك الجميلة البيت هل البيت السعودي في الأمس مثل اليوم أم تغير في تربية الجيل القادم لعلك سمو الأمير تضفي علينا من خبرتك السابقة هل الجيل السابق أحسن أم الجيل القادم لعلنا نستفيد في هذا اليوم الجميل بما تراه وبعد النظر لديك سيدي شكرا Thank you very much indeed, sir. Your Royal Highness, you've uh, made the mistake already of sharing with us your affection and admiration, not for another great world leader, but for a boy who's six and a half years old. Bear him in mind when you answer your friend's question. Let me say that uh, if you heard my talk earlier, you will have seen that I accuse myself of having failed to provide my children and my grandchildren with a better world than the one I inherited from my parents. I speak for myself. I am not in this audience going to condemn everybody else of my generation as I accuse myself of the lackings that unfortunately uh, I see happening around us. Whether it is in terms of political development or social misgivings or economic poverty and deprivation. Um, King Abdullah in his speech before the Islamic, the extraordinary Islamic summit in Mecca uh, called for several things in a 10-point program that he proposed to the Muslim leadership of the world. The first point he called for 
was that we as Muslims have to put our house in order before we can expect to cooperate and to engage with others in improving the world community. And the second point was that we as Muslims should work together to alleviate the poverty of our fellow human beings uh, throughout the world. And the third point, of course, as he always concentrates on, on anything that he talks about, is on improving education throughout the world community as a means of alleviating poverty and eradicating what was part of his fourth point, disease. These are issues, I think, that all of us can claim responsibility for. But in specific terms, the world has changed today than it was when I was growing up. And as I said in my talk, the world has become at the fingertips of everybody who seeks to do what he wants, whether it is through the internet, through the uh, telemedia, or through the various um, IT developments that have occurred in the last 30 years or so. And this is what gives future generations uh, better tools, perhaps, to meet the challenges of, uh, of the coming world. Let me just make one comment on, on the previous question about civilization um, and the clash of civilizations. Because His Royal Highness Prince Khaled al Faisal, a few years back, uh, made a very insightful and I think very wise statement when he said that in his view there is one human civilization with varying branches that come out from a tree, uh, a stem of the tree, and as each branch dies off, another branch takes over. But all of them are tied together. And I think this beautifully uh, um, challenges the perception and perhaps even the proposition of those, whether in the West or in the East, who would make distinctions between human beings according to their beliefs or their cultures or their backgrounds. Prime Minister, can I just steal the question slightly and turn it around and put it also to you? Because here's another thought as well about young people. The President talked about the pace of change and being cautious. Things can sometimes appear to go too quickly. Are your children in Palestine quite the opposite of that? Are you aware of an impatience amongst your young people who look to dignified political leaders, established and accepted structures, and say, too slow for us? Is that a real worry also? Uh, there is definitely a strong sense of that, for sure. Uh, not on the, only on the part of the uh, younger, younger generation, uh, but also those who, for decades, have been look looking uh, for an end to this conflict uh, in a manner that brings about dignity for us and chance to enjoy